Let's suppose we have two boxes that are connected by a massless cord as shown in the diagram to the left. Now box number two hangs vertically over a frictionless pulley. Now neglecting friction and mass allows us to make the assumption that our force remains undiminished. The force along any point in the cord is exactly the same. Now, suppose the mass of box one is 10 kilograms, the mass of box two is 20 kilograms, and the coefficient of kinetic friction between the surface on which box one is located is 0.2. We want to calculate what the acceleration of box one and box two is. Now because these boxes are connected by a cord, their acceleration, the magnitude, will be exactly the same. Box 2 will accelerate downward along the uh, y-axis and box 1 will accelerate to the po in the positive direction along the x-axis. So, we begin by labeling all our forces on box 1 and box 2. So, the free body diagram for box 1 and the free body diagram for box 2. So, let's begin with box 1. So we have the force in the rope, the tension shown by FT acting in the positive direction along our x-axis. And the force of friction is resisting the motion, so it's acting in the opposite direction. So that means if we sum up all the forces, we get the following equation. So the sum of all the forces act on box 1 along the x-axis is equal to, so we choose going this way to be positive, so the tension in our rope minus this way is negative, so minus the force of friction equals the max of box 1 multiplied by whatever our acceleration of box 1 is. Now, at the same time, we could also draw the free body diagram for object 2 for mass 2. Now, we have the force of gravity pulling down on box 2, and the tension in our rope is pulling it back upward. So, we have the following sum. We take the sum of all the forces along the y-axis. We choose going down to be positive, going up to be negative. The force of gravity on box 2 minus the tension in my force, the same tension that we spoke about in the first equation, equals the mass of object 2 multiplied by that same acceleration. Once again, these A's are the same because our two objects, two boxes, are connected by a cord. And these tensions are also the same because we made the assumption that A, our box, or our pulley is frictionless, and B, our rope is massless. So, now we can rearrange equation 1 to the following. So we bring everything to one side and the force, the tension in our rope to the other side. So the tension in our rope, Ft, is equal to mass 1 times A plus the frictional force. Now I take this equation and I plug what I got here into the tension in my rope. So what I'm essentially doing is I want to solve for my acceleration, so I want to get rid of the tension in my rope. So I want to get rid of my second unknown variable. So we have two equations, two unknown variables. I want to use these two equations to solve for my single variable, A. So I plug that in, and I get the following result. So the force of gravity that's acting on object 2 minus this whole equation. So m1 times a plus my force of friction equals m2 times a. So I distribute my negative and I uh, rearrange my equation. So I bring all the variables that have the a to one side, everything else to the other side. So I get a multiplied mass 1 times mass 2 equals uh, force of gravity minus the frictional force. Now I bring over, I divide both sides by mass 1 plus mass 2, and I get that my acceleration is equal to the following formula. So now I know every single value on the right side, and I don't know my left side, so I plug in my values. 
I get 20 kilograms, object number 2, multiplied by 9.8 meters per second squared minus the coefficient of kinetic friction 0 0.2 multiplied by the mass of object 1 multiplied by g 9.8 meters per second squared and divide that whole thing by my total mass of my system, object 1 plus object 2, and that gives me 196 minus 19.6 newtons divided by 30 kilograms and we get our acceleration of the system of box 1 and box 2 is 5.88 meters per second squared. So box 1 is traveling in the positive direction along the x-axis with this acceleration and box number 2 is traveling with this same magnitude acceleration but it's traveling vertically downward along the y-axis.